Hello, we're going to talk about EPR today. And in order to do that, we have to talk about the spin on an electron. So it turns out that electrons have a, a useful feature, spin. It's a quantum uh, theory a feature of a, both a nucleus and of an electron. So when you take uh, quantum or chem 318, you'll learn more about that. But we're just going to assume that these have a directional feature to it. So in a regular sample, I've got a tube here, and it's got a variety of spins, and they're pointing in different directions. And in a magnetic field, you'll find if I add, if I have a random sample here with uh, electrons pointing in different directions, but then I put a magnetic field here pointing in this direction, that these five spins will try to line up with the magnet. A uh, few of them will be, will point the other direction. So there are two possible spin states, either aligned with the magnet or opposing the magnet, but no longer random pointing in variety of directions. So again, if you've got a magnetic field, here's my magnetic field, and I've got a sample with a lot of spins, what I'm gonna find is, oops, a little lag there, uh, a lot of these magnets will be aligned this direction. And I'll also have a variety of ones, because this is a very small energy gap, I'll have almost as many pointing in the opposite direction. So something like this maybe. But then if I give it in EPR, microwave frequency radiation, in NMR, we look at nuclear spins and we use radio frequency. I can take some of these and promote a few of them to the opposite, so higher energy because they just absorb that. Oops, let's get rid of that one. Um, put a few more pointing down than I had before. So now I've got, if one of these switched, I now have, or maybe two of them, maybe I now have more in the pointing down opposite the magnetic spin than I did before. So that energy level it takes to have them jump up or fall back down to the original lower energy is called the G value. And if you really get into EPR, you're gonna spend some time looking at that G value and how much energy it takes for that to absorb. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on that in this class. And then we're gonna look at the another effect, which is the hyper, hyper fine splitting. And this is much like you also have seen before in proton carbon, proton NMR, where you see the splitting. So this magnet, this uh, EPR signal, right? It's G signal would be somewhere in here, but it's showing up as a quartet. And that's because the methyl radical, this got one unpaired electron, is also impacted by the nuclear spin of the atoms next door. So if I have this carbon, there are, we're looking at the, we're in EPR, we're observing this electron, but there are each of these nuclei next door. And protons, because this is an innate factor of a nucleus, uh, some of them have different spins. Proton has a spin of a half. And we can use this formula where it's two times the number of nuclei. So we have three of them here, times three, times L, the spin, which is one half plus one. So two times a half, those are going to cancel out. So three times one plus one, this equals four. So I get a spin splitting of four lines. So you can see this hyperfine splitting over multiple bonds as well. So you get some practice on that in the workbook. 
You can also see this in metals where we look at copper, we have an unpaired electron on it, and we look at the spin of the nucleus. And so this is three halves. It's got a spin of three halves times, there's one nucleus, times a half, oops, plus one. Um, so now we get three halves. Ah, what am I doing? Three halves times one nucleus times two, not a half, because it's three halves. The twos cancel out and I get three. So I'll get a spectrum that looks like this. And like NMR, this is going to be a ratio of one to three to one. And then down here, it's two times seven halves times one. And so I get seven. And again, there's some more practice on these in the workbook.